Judy Elliott. And coming up today, are you ready to make a change in 2024? Well, today's show may give you some great ideas on how to do that. From the latest in real estate to sharing your time to make a difference in a child's life. All this coming up today on the show. We'll be right back. I'm Judy Elliott and welcome back to our show today. We have a great show. Uh, my first guest today is uh, Mike Merritt with Coldwell Banker Canard Realty. Great pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Great, great to be here, Judy. You know, I, I always try to have you on occasionally, just kind of give us a feel for what's going on in the market. We're into a new year. Right, absolutely. 2024. Yeah, That's right. Brings in a lot of new questions. A lot of people may have. Tell us, give us an update on real estate. Well, I, I'm, I'm kind of going. I'm going to go back a long way and kind of go from a historical perspective okay. of kind of where, 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 what's happened and where we, where we, where we are t today. Okay. Um, and you know, interest rates are always a hot topic. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you go historically back, you know, 40 years as far as real estate goes, you know, even back in the early 80s, the the interest rate, 30 year fixed rate mortgage was, you know, pushing 20 percent. It was double digits, 15 to 18 percent. Um, and I've got some notes here. So in 1996, when I got in the real estate business, uh, the rates were eight and a half to nine. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2021, just two, three years ago, they dropped below three percent, which Whoa. is the lowest they've ever been since they've been recording interest rates. It was under three percent. So I forgot it was that low. Yeah. So 2021 and you know into 2022, the rates were low, 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 and that just that just fed the feeding frenzy of real estate, and it drove prices really, really high. Um, so in 23. The, in November of 23, uh, the average was 7.76. Mm -hmm. So you had a huge increase over two years from under two to just a little bit under eight. And, you know, it slowed things down a little bit in the, especially the half, last half of 2023. It slowed things down. But, but I like to think about it, Judy, you know, when you're on the interstate and you're driving 90 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, we were driving 90 miles an hour in the real estate business in 21 and 22. Mm -hmm. But... You know, maybe you need to slow down a little bit down to, say, 75 or 80. Mm -hmm. You're still going pretty fast, mm -hmm. but it's, it seems like it's slowed down dramatically. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happened to us as far as the real estate business goes. We're still selling a good number of homes, a lot of real estate, uh, but it's just a little bit slower than we have been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there's, you know, the, the inventory is still low. We've got a little bit higher inventory than we had uh, say just this time last year, uh, but we've still only got three months of supply of homes. And the average or the normal market is six months. So we're at half the amount of a normal market in regards to inventory, which once again keeps the prices up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just a few more stats. Um, you know, from 22 to 23, we've got our year end numbers for December of 23, and this would be for Whitfield County. Uh, the average sales price, and this is from uh, the Dalton MLS, uh, it's 284000 which is a 6% increase from 22. So, you know, even with the interest, rate ri interest rates rising, inventory stayed low, and prices still kept on going up. And, you know, I would foresee the, the interest rates going down a little bit in 24. Uh, you know, the average now is 6.6, .6, so they've even gone down in the last two, three months. Uh, but inventory is still low. Um, so the prices should continue to appreciate. So I guess my point is, is that, you know, there are, there are available homes out there, uh, but the buyers are going to be getting more back in the market because of the lower rates. I see. So, you know, you hear all kinds of, of, of rumors and things going on. You really don't know, but when you've got the statistics there, because that's a great way to really that's know right. what's going on in the market. Right. You know, sometimes people think, well, real estate slowed down. Um, the number of transactions have slowed down a, a little bit, but the price appreciation hasn't. So when you, when you hear somebody says, well, you know, real estate has slowed down, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, values are going down. Values right. have continued to go up in our marketplace, right. uh, which is good right. and encouraging. And, um, you know, once again, with the lower rates, hopefully uh, more buyers will be getting back in the market. I think a lot of buyers are just kind of in shock with the with the quick rise of the rates. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Well, does it, does it all also mean that if the um, the rate um, is um, is is down a little bit, which we're seeing now, is what you said, like six percent right. or something 
something like that. Right. Does that does that mean? I think I think to me, what my takeaway on that is is your value of your home is still still the, the, good. The value's there, which is great. It, uh, absolutely, and with the lower rates, it's going to make the, for buyers uh, more affordable because of a lower sure. payment. And, um, you know, there's still a lot of buyers out there looking for property. Um, you know, sellers need to still, in, my, in our opinion, hire a professional real estate agent to come out yeah. and look at the property. Uh, you know, you need to get it in as best condition possible if you're going to go to market and sell and, and sell your home. Mm -hmm. um, and a professional real estate agent can um, can advise you about what to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, houses that are in, if they're priced right and they're in great condition, they'll sell quick, just like they were selling in, you know, 21 and 22. Right. It's just, just it's still the average of stay on the market. It's like you're saying, like, oh, yeah, it's like very, three, it's, three, three months compared to like yeah, the a year. There's, there's still a, a, the days on market. Uh, it increased a little bit in 23, but it's still not dramatic. Uh, you know, it used to be, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, it would, you know, it'd take us four to six to eight months to sell mm -hmm. homes. Um, you know, during, you know, 21 and 22, you know, we'd put something on the market and it'd sell within, you know, a couple of weeks yeah. all the time. Uh, but, I, you know, we're seeing some of that still, but once again, you got to price it competitively, um, and, and that's where we come into play to help you price it competitively, look at comps, um, and get it in the best possible condition uh, to put it for sale. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, going to, I, I was just thinking as you were talking about that, why would anyone not have a professional to help them through the process? And, I, and I'm thinking, I'd be scared to mm -hmm. try to, number one, sell my house or buy a house if I didn't have someone who does this as a profession. Well, I agree with you. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess people do that. <laughs> right, but I mean, right. for me, I'd be kind of. Well, I, I think that. once again, pricing is key. Uh, you know, you, you, you don't need to overprice a property. If you overprice a listing, it's probably going to sit on the market for a little while. And that's where we can come in. We're in the market every day, and we can help you. Put it, put it at the most competitive price possible right. to get the best buyers out there possible. Right. Um, but, you know, the, the future, in my opinion, in northwest Georgia and southeast Tennessee is very bright. Uh, you know, the demographics are looking very promising for uh, our area. You know, you've got a lot of people moving into the south. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming to southeast yeah. Tennessee. They're coming to northwest Georgia. Uh, you know, even here in Dalton, you know, we've got a great quality of life, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great place to live. Uh, you know, we've got great public schools. We have a, a good private school option, which is great for kids with family. I mean, with, with families with children. Um, you know, we've got a great downtown area that, have, that has been revitalized yeah. downtown. A lot of great restaurants. Uh, you know, we've now got a new uh, boutique motel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> downtown Dalton. So there's a lot, lot of great stuff happening in Dalton. Uh, you know, I always talk about that uh, Dalton for a small town is so charitable and philanthropic. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think people that, that move here from out of town cannot believe about that about Dalton and also about the great public schools. Right. It's that people are blown away that come from larger cities to, to, right. to see what, what Dalton and Northwest Georgia has to offer. A uh, couple other things that's what, what increases the quality of life for Dalton is our medical community. Mm -hmm. We've got a great medical com community. We've got a great hospital. And, you know, when people are looking to purchase homes, and, and um, that's that's part of what they're looking for. Yeah. Um, and, and then also, you know, I feel like, you know, we've got the, we're strategically located too. You know, we're kind of in between Chattanooga and Atlanta. We mm -hmm. kind of get the best of both worlds. We've right. got the, you know, small town atmosphere, small town community. But if we need to go to a bigger city, we can get get there yeah. fairly quickly. Honestly, you, you said it all. I mean, Dalton has it yeah, all going on. Yeah, it's a great on. place. So, Absolutely. You know, if you're looking to buy or sell or or, or either down, down downsize, upgrade, move up, whatever, yeah. that's right. You got it covered. That's right. Hey, I want to say real quick before yeah. our time is up. Congratulations this year coming up in 2024. 50 years. Yeah, our, our company, uh, Coldwell Banker Canard Realty, has been serving our community for 50 years. And, and you know, we're so grateful for the for this community for supporting us all these years. Uh, Bob and Dixie Canard started the company in 1974 in Dalton uh, with a single office. And, you know, now we've, we've grown to five offices. Our main office is in Dalton. Uh, we go north to Ringgold. And then we go into Tennessee, in Cleveland, Tennessee, up in Bradley County. And then we go south to um, uh, Calhoun and also Cartersville. Mm -hmm. So we can cover from, you know, Chattanooga, Cleveland, uh, just a little north of, uh, north into southeast Tennessee and all the way to, uh, you know, Cartersville and south. So we're, we're excited, but it's, it's, it's been a great, it, the Dalton has been great to our company. And, you know, we've sold 
you know, thousands of homes over the years and properties yeah. over the years, and we really appreciate this community supporting us over all these years. Great. And, and you too. Jane. Well, thank you very yeah. much. And, and, and I, I will say this, um, certainly it's a pleasure to have you on, to always give us kind of a, what's going on in real estate. You know, it's it's good. People want to know what's happening out there. That's um, right. That's right. So we're in a new year. We appreciate the opportunity. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, thank you. Mike, thank for being you. with welcome. us. Thank you. And stay with us here. We have more to come in just a moment. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Judy Elliott, and as we continue the show today, this is our second segment, and I am talking with Tracy Harmon, who is with the uh, Whitfield Murray Family Support Council. Thank you so much for coming out and being with us today. Thank you for having me. You know, um, we're into a, a, a new year, and also I, I, I just talked with Mike Merritt about that just a few minutes ago, but it also brings up uh, some great ways to help in the community. We're going to be talking about that today, but uh, I know you're with the, the, the CASA part of the uh, Whitfield Murray Family Support Council, which is a division under that. Right. But let's talk first about um, what is the Whitfield uh, Murray Family Support Council, kind of Kind of give us a briefing of what that is. The Family Support Council is a child abuse prevention agency. Um, it's been around a long time, and it has a lot of organizations under its umbrella. So we have um, Grandparents Raising Grandchildren, an organization that helps out grandparents that have their grandchildren under their um, home that they're raising mm -hmm. um, due to unforeseen circumstances um, for one reason or another. We have a clothes closet that we keep clothes for them and we provide um, help for them in ways that you wouldn't expect that they would need help. Um, we have a program called Healthy Families, which is a home visitation program where um, we have um, people that go out to the hospital when babies are born and offer them a service for home visits for them, the home visitors to go to their homes and help them with the newborns and with the babies at different stages in their lives to be meeting the goals that these that the babies need to meet. Mm -hmm. um, it's totally optional. They can choose to have it or not, mm -hmm. but it helps babies meet their milestones and it helps the parents when they're at a critical point sure. where they're stressed or whatever. And if they need formula or they need diapers or they need just clothing, we have all that available to them at our agency free of charge. Right. Um, so uh, we have um, also the Oak Haven Home for Teen Moms. And I think right now we house 14 moms and babies at Oak Haven. We may have more than 14 babies. We may have one mom that has two children wow. right now. And everything is free to them as mm -hmm. long as they, are, they stay in school. Um, yeah, because so. I guess there are certain <coughs> requirements that qual I guess no, so qualify. They have to qualify, I guess, for those those yes. things. Yes, they um, have to stay in the program sure. and have to um, let the visitors go out to their homes. They have to let the um, uh, uh, with grandparents raising grandchildren, they have to participate in the programs. Mm -hmm. And um, at Oak Haven, the teen moms have to um, stay in school sure. and um, participate. Sure. Um, Is there a lot of, kind of things. do you see a lot of, are there a lot of um, grandparents raising grandchildren? Yes, there are a lot of grandparents raising grandchildren. Right. So mm -hmm. this is a, also, a, as you mentioned, a great program that helps you know, not only the teens, but also it, older uh, situations, uh, you know, more yes. mature families uh, yes. that needs help yes. as well. Yes, yes. Um, so at, at, in this, um, this pamphlet I gave you, we also do cooperative parenting and divorce classes for parents that are going through um, divorce, court-ordered parenting classes. We have those free of... Well, they're not free of charge, but for a small fee. Mm -hmm. um, we have those at our um, facility that they can sign up for and come do. And we also have um, uh, different kinds of parenting education classes mm -hmm. that are happening. And um, we're starting a divorce class in Murray County. 
wow. um, that we'll do once a month there. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of things going on at Family Support Council, including the CASA program that I'm right. a part of. Yeah, exactly. So there, I, I didn't realize there was so much under that big umbrella yes. of the Whitfield uh, Murray the Family, family support, support Council. That's, yes. that's a lot. Um, now, I know there's a website that people can go to, a, you know, a mm -hmm. generic website. Um, people can go to. Do you have that website? Yes, it's www.familysupportcouncil.com. Okay. And that's the Family Support Council. And then um, all of our organizations are listed under that mm -hmm. website. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to take a break here. Uh, but when we come back, I, I, I want people to, to know more about a program that you specifically wanted to talk about today, right. and that is the CASA program yes. and how people who, you know, who are out there that may want to be part of and contribute to the community and help ch change a child's life. I, I think this is a great program, too, among all the others. But yes. um, So we'll be back with you right here in just a moment. Stay with us. Thank you. for joining us back here today. We continue our show as we are talking with um, Tracy Harmon, who is with the uh, Whitfield Murray Family Support Council. And we're talking about the, the program within that called CASA, right? Yes. And um, I think, as we talked during the break, um, it's just such a great program that people can share their time and their heart and become a volunteer. Tell me, what is CASA? So Murray Whitfield CASA is a program that um, is, it, it stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate for Children in Foster Care. And I always say, don't let court, the first word, scare you. Because um, actually, CASAs are advocates for children in foster care. And um, they advocate for the child that's been removed from their home and have, have been taken and put in foster care, and they become their um, person. And their as voice, their person, they're their voice. They um, go through a 10-week training. We are starting our new training on February the 6th. And it goes for 10 weeks on Tuesday nights from 5.30 to 9. I know that sounds like a daunting amount of time. But by the time they leave our training, they are very prepared to be an advocate. And as an advocate, they get to know everything there is to, they need to know about that child. So is that child's parents doing what they need to do to get their children back? Are we working for reunification? Are we working for um, guardianship with another family member? Are we working for um, any kind of permanency? And um, we ask that that volunteer visit the child once um, a month. We say it takes about 20 hours a month to be a CASA. And, um, we want them to get to know that child. Um, we ask them not to take them expensive gifts or things like that, but just to um, uh, advocate for them in school as far as um, what, their best in, what their best interests are mm -hmm. to the judge. So they're appointed by the judge. Okay. So it is truly their voice that they are representing that child. And uh, with the volunteer uh, program that you mentioned, I know you said mm -hmm. you started in February. Of them. Mm -hmm. um, if, if someone sees this even after the February date, start mm -hmm. date, you do have these other times during the year, right? Because I think yes. this is going to be showing even that date plus more. Yes. So we have trainings three times a year. And um, we have one in the winter, one in the spring, and one in the fall. Mm -hmm. And so it goes, like I said, for 10 weeks. And um, then once they finish, they're sworn in by the judge and they're assigned a supervisor at the Family Support Council. And then um, I always say that's like the second part of training, that they... Um, are given their supervisor and then them, the volunteer and the supervisor pick a case 
that they want. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm getting dry mouth here. I apologize. <laughs> well, um, I, I think it's still the, the fact that people can become involved, even though this particular class may have started. Yes. Uh, uh, they can do that. But you do have a kind of a theme that you're yes. using for the February. And the, what new, is that? the new training, um, we are right now doing a um, contest with our CASAs. Um, Share your heart with a child and be a CASA. And it's called the Heartbeat of CASA. Um, and our CASAs right now can earn points by putting out posters like this one or sharing um, leave behind cards or sharing CASA with their friends with these um, and so you might see these out in the community and um, it's all about getting the word out sure absolutely hey um, one thing um, a telephone number that they can call is 706-428-7931 yes to get involved mm -hmm. um, taking it from the standpoint of that side versus the side where uh, a volunteer gets so much out of the program itself. I mean, it sounds like the children get a lot. Mm -hmm. What do you see from the volunteer standpoint that they they get from being a volunteer? I know that it sounds like it's very daunting for a volunteer to um, take on this role. It's more than just a regular volunteer uh, role, but all of our volunteers that do this, they get so much more out of it. It's, it's, um, it is sharing their heart with the child. Mm -hmm. They become um, not so much attached, but it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a feeling of doing something much more important. Sure. Absolutely, because you're you're really you never know if you're going to be changing a child's life or right. his her his path his or her path uh, by having such a positive influence mm -hmm. from a volunteer. Right, and right now we have 214 kids in foster care in Murray and Whitfield County, and we're only serving 58 of those kids with volunteers. Wow. So we need so many more volunteers right now. We would like to have 40 people in this class. Right. Um, and we're not close to that right now. Right. Um, so um, the most important thing I can say is volunteers that do this, their heart is in it, and they do it because they love it. Mm -hmm. they, it's, it's something that, that they're passionate about. Sure. What, what age groups do you see that... The volunteer? Uh, no, the, 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 the kids. The kids are, they age out at 18. Okay. Um, so um, every age. Okay. We have kids from newborns to 18. 18 mm, that's great. Here. Yeah. So um, our volunteers can pick any age child and any sex child. Sure. And, and we have the telephone number on screen. If you have any questions about what we've discussed uh, today, certainly uh, and want to be coming in, involved, certainly give the number a call, to, uh, talk to Tracy. That is direct to my desk. Okay. And then my email is tharmon at fscdalton.com. Okay. Super. Well, I want to say thank you so, so much for um, being with us here today, Tracy. Thank we you. certainly appreciate your time and certainly appreciate um, everything the, the um, Whitfield Murray uh, Family um, Support Council is doing and with uh, throughout the community and for so many, many, many families throughout. Yes. throughout. So um, thank you again for being with us. And thank we hope you. that you will be part of this volunteer uh, program. Uh, again, 706-428-7931. Yeah. And talk to Tracy. She can get you hooked up with that. And if you can't make the February, find out other classes. Right? We also have an independent study that people can do online. Oh. Too. So okay. if you can't come into the office and do the nighttime training, there is something that you can do on online by on your own in your own office um, okay. and come into our office and do like a debrief type thing. Okay, great. Well, share your heart with a child. Be a CASA volunteer. That's the theme coming up here in February. Thank you so much again Thank you. for being with us. And until next time, I'm Judy Elliott. We'll see you again and we hope you have a great day. See you next time.